now uh, I want to invite uh, Iveta Delicatna to our meeting uh, and I think she will help us to know a little bit better Ukraine um, and this is a very important uh, for our intercultural communication because um, Ukraine, between Ukraine and Spain it is a <laughs> quite a lot of kilometers and uh, I know that uh, not a lot of uh, even old people, uh, let's say, uh, nor youngest, uh, know uh, a lot of facts about Ukraine. And uh, I think we have a lot of myths about what is Ukraine. So, uh, Iveta, please uh, start your uh, speech um, and uh, help us to know better <laughs> Okay, thank you and uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, everybody hears me, see the screen, everything is okay? Okay, great. It's okay. Uh, of course, uh, the main topic of my speech today will be about environment in Ukraine and a, a bit about the war and how it influenced the environment. Uh, and I won't tell you a lot of things about Ukraine, of course, I would like to, but I understand that uh, today there is a bit different uh, topic. Uh, it's really exciting program and I'm sure you have great uh, tutors and mentors and uh, the outcomes will be just just very creative and I would like to, to come to Valencia to meet you all if, if it happens in November. Uh, a couple of words about me. I'm Ukrainian native. Uh, I was born on eastern of Ukraine, Kharkiv. It's 40 kilometers from Russia. Uh, I spent uh, all my life in advertising, so I'm a pure advertising person. All my life I worked with designers, uh, video production, photo production, so I understand the whole world of art very, very well and how to use it in communication. But last 10 years I worked uh, mostly for the government, for communication of reforms, uh, including your integration, and last three years I've worked with environmental topics. I'm not an ecologist, I'm a communication person, but so since I work in the big project which helps Ukrainian government to launch the reforms in the environmental sphere, I can share with you the data about ecological situation in Ukraine. So uh, since the war is our major like topic context, uh, everything, let me let me just uh, uh, give you the, the the most important figures. Uh, we are nearly 600 days of the war, but actually uh, everybody admits that the war started nine years ago in 2014 when Russia seized uh, part of Donbass and uh, Crimea. So actually it's ninth year of the war and the active phase of the war is nearly two years in February. Uh, it influenced the huge um, dislocation of people. Um, and you know that in Europe there are 8 million refugees, a lot of people from the East and West moved to Central and Western Ukraine. We still have people who live in occupied territories, which is the biggest um, disaster, of, of course. And actually now the 20% of the country is occupied and this 20% I understand that it's maybe difficult to, to understand the, the map, but in comparison is the size of Greece or nearly the size of Bulgaria where Greece is, for, is, is now. So imagine if the whole Bulgaria is occupied or one third of Spain. So it's a huge, huge territory. And of course, if you look at the map of Ukraine, it doesn't seem seems that, that big. It's the right uh, bottom corner. But we started from the uh, territories which were seized in 2014, the part of uh, Donbass and Crimea. Then in February, Russia very quickly invaded um, all of the no north and eastern part where my native city also too. Uh, but then uh, because of efforts of Ukrainian army, we kick them off and now this area of uh, nearly 180,000 kilometers is seized, uh, 20,000, but but still it's 20% of the country. It's a huge, huge uh, territory. And what is also threatening is uh, the even the, those territories which were liberated are full of mines. So even at my countryside in Kharkiv, where my father lives, we still have the mining territories because it's only 11 kilometers from the Russian border and all this countryside is mined. And uh, of course, if we use all the resources, all the um, instruments, tools, um, uh, 
equipment which exists in, in the world, we can uh, demine this territory in, in 10 years. But some say that actually, assuming current resources which Ukraine has, it can take hundreds of years. And uh, it's one of the ecological problems, actually, which will I come back later. Uh, but I start with it just showing you the, the scale scale of, of the problem. Uh, I understand that those who of you who are in Ukraine, as I understood the part of residents is Ukrainians, I, I won't tell you anything new about this film, but I would like you to see this 10 minutes uh, video just to see the beauty of Ukraine and the scale and the nature. So please... Uh Yeah, I uh, hope, hope you felt that uh, touch of the contributing and uh, uh, we go forward. You saw that we have uh, hundreds of lakes, thousands of rivers. We have two seas, Black and Azov Sea, uh, which again is under occupation. Azov Sea is uh, fully, fully surrounded by Russians. We have huge water reservoirs, one of which is destroyed, Kahovka Gas, and you will have the uh, Tatiana, who will later tell you uh, in 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 a couple of weeks uh, the whole story about this this uh, disaster. Uh, we have 200 resources of mineral waters, maybe not that one which Chris has in Bulgaria, because I know that the area which you mentioned has huge number of uh, resources of hot water, of hot mineral water, 35 plus. Uh, uh, temperature, but uh, it's it's a huge also resource in Ukraine. Uh, nearly 50 national parks, and half of them are occupied. And uh, the biggest one is Askania Nova. It's in Kherson region. It's fully occupied, and it's famous for that it's never ever been developed by the human. So uh, all the lands are they're not touched by humans. So it's wild nature, wild land. And you know that Ukraine is known for its agriculture because of black soil. Two thirds of uh, land is black. We have a joke that if you put the stick into the soil, it will flourish without any water and additional supplies because the, the, the soil is so rich. 
We have mountains. Uh, Crimean mountains is not that high, but Carpathian goes to Romania and, and part of Bulgaria, as, as I remember, And uh, but it, they are not very high too. And of course, we have uh, thousands types of animals as any countries. We don't have any specific types of animals as kangaroo or giraffe, but still, uh, still it, it's, uh, it's a lot. Uh, what, what ecological problems we have before the war and now? Of course, there are lots, lots of it. And uh, uh, the issue with Ukraine is that uh, we are now, you know, that we are trying to enter European Union. And uh, we have uh, seven requirements and a huge list of requirements you, we should fulfill. And unfortunately, everything which is connected with environment is in the worst condition. So we are far beyond the whole Europe, particularly in environmental legislation, actions, infrastructure, business um, case situations. And it's it's very, very actually bad and the war even worse in it. But still, you should know this picture because you may um, in, include this. It, it should inspire you for your art projects. So uh, we have nuclear power stations. Uh, it's it's like, I mean, before green green energy, the the most progressive type of energy. But one is occupied. Uh, Chernobyl was uh, occupied during months. Uh, the most striking figure about Ukraine is that 95% of waste in Ukraine is not recycled. You can't imagine this in any European countries. We have maybe dozens of uh, factories which recycle waste, but all of the rest is stored in landfills, and it's, it's just awful. Uh, most of Ukrainian industry uh, factories are not modern modernized, so they sometimes use equipment of 20s, 30s of the past century, and uh, what what generates a lot of bad emission to the um, air, which also Europe consumes. And um, nevertheless, the green energy portion, wind, sun, and water, takes only 13% of power before the war. Now it's 6% because half of it just got by, by occupied territories. And what is, again, the... the um, most striking is that Ukrainians are not interested with environmental problems. It's sad but true. Uh, but if you look at the data about Europeans, 93% of Europeans consider climate change in top three of, of the problems and uh, topics of their interests. In Ukraine, this figure is 3%. 3% of Ukrainians cares about a uh, change of climate. Uh, ecological problem uh, does not is not included into top 20 of their interests. And it's, of course, sad because this doesn't um, uh, push and stimulate politicians to be care about this pro problem. And we do not have uh, green political parties. We don't have green politicians. And... Uh, Actually, only this uh, passion to enter European Union actually set the standards we should fulfill in. So for, for us, this is the only motivation to uh, accept laws and change the situation. At the same time, we have dozens of civic organizations, activist initiatives. They're really very active, very loud. And it's in contrary to this overall um, indifference uh, of Ukrainians to, to the environment um, somehow provoke the, the appearance of such organizations. This is just a couple of pictures which illustrate what I talked about. This is the how this landfills look like. This is Krivarosh Stal. This is the biggest factory in the center of Ukraine. And actually, Azov factory, which is seized in Mariupol by Russians, looks the same. And the problem is that they are in the center of the city. So people just uh, consume this very bad pollution. We have very pro big problems with Carpathian Mountains, uh, forests, um, seizure because, again, absence of law enforcement. A lot of criminals just cut it and sell to Europe. Uh, we have problems with water pollution. So really, really many, many, many problems which are not still solved. So now, now uh, closer to the war, how it influences the, um, uh, um, the environment. And uh, there are seven directions. 
and as I understood here, you can choose uh, the area which you will explain or promote in your art project because uh, they are very different and, and very differently influence um, people and nature. So, of course, it's better to focus and cho choose one of it. So the first one is radiation. You know that the whole world know about Chernobyl. Fortunately, it was seized only for 35 days. Those stupid Russians entered that um, burden of wood, which is full of radiation. Of course, they caught the just tons of radiation. I, I think they all died already because of that. Uh, but still, it was very short visit. And, and, and um, the main threat, of course, now is Zaporizhia. You saw that Magade comes to Zaporizhia to, to check it monthly. But actually, all the workers there are just hostages. And, and there is a lot of weapon in that. that area and what is important about radiation uh, the last research both in Europe and in Ukraine says that when it comes to radiation threat everybody becomes to be to care about environment and everybody says oh yeah it's important so they suddenly uh, when they connect uh, the environmental issue with uh, personal threat they become interested in, in, in environmental issues. And radiation is number one, because they understand how it works, because we have the Chernobyl case. Uh, second direction is water and um, water pipes, water stations, uh, uh, all, all the like technical units which, which uh, organized the whole water system, 700 of them are destroyed. What influences again the uh, is a river is full of water or shortened of water, and of course uh, the most of the rivers uh, on the east and south are polluted with oil because uh, we have a lot of blow ups of uh, you see next the 36 oil depots were blowed up so all this oil went to the waters partially. And uh, you saw the examples even in Bulgaria and Turkey and Georgia and of course in Ukrainian shores. Hundreds of dolphins were just uh, dead and thrown to the beaches. Um, a third direction is air. And this is the um, area which is mostly influenced across the whole Europe, right? Because when these emissions goes to the water, the wind uh, just spread it out very far. And uh, you know that the CO2 is the biggest threat to climate to ozone layer. And of course, all these blown ups uh, influence this this climate um, case very, very much. Uh, the fourth uh, direction in forests and sparks, I told you already that half of them is seized. And uh, we know that Russians deport or kill wild animals. Uh, they destroy the corpse and plants uh, there. Uh, flora and fauna, again, um, they, they cruelly just uh, burn it or just um, take all this uh, um, ready crops and, and uh, transport it and export it from Russia's side. And uh, the biggest threat, of course, is for soil, because you, you see how important this black soil for, for Ukraine. And uh, a lot of it is polluted with ammunition, with mines. And what is also important is mineral resources are occupied. You know the story about Bakhmut. You see the uh, like half a year, the whole war is around Bakhmut. This is the small city in the east of Ukraine. And it's a huge salt mines there. And Prigozhin, that guy whom Putin killed in the air crash, actually uh, seized that salt and just took, took away the whole storage of the salt. And they're interested uh, not even in conquering Ukraine, but also in just uh, grabbing all this coal and metal and everything, because Donbass is very rich in mineral resources, and they just seized it all and, and uh, took it to Russia. And what is also um, new for the whole world about this war is number of waste. And actually, this is the only problem which you, uh, even the Europe cannot solve, because even Yugoslavian war did not produce that much tons of military waste. Imagine how many ta tanks and uh, equipment and bullets and um, weapons are destroyed, burned. And all of the rest is around the, the whole area, and nobody knows what to do with it. Uh, by now, uh, all organizations trying to estimate 
what is the weight of those but uh, plus to this uh, weapon waste we have buildings um, waste those buildings which are blown up and, and uh, uh, it's also very difficult to differentiate consumer electronics lamps all is inside it's all just cr crashed what to do with it so this is the the biggest issue for for europe now and si since we're talking about ecology of course uh home and home animals home um, cats and dogs are not considered to be part of environmental um, industry officially. But I thought that I would mention it because I don't know what can inspire you uh, for your uh, art projects. I just would like to mention that uh, plus to uh, enormous heroism of people, say that uh, people here, I, I'm uh, 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 we have so many thousands of examples when people risking their life to save animals, dogs, even wounded dogs and uh, paralyzed dogs. So, you know, this is very, I mean, just iconic uh, photograph of the girl who saved uh, dogs in Irpin, the Kiev near, near city. So maybe this, this um, and we have so many examples when people just carry their dogs on themselves and, and just amazing. Um, just to, to show you maybe the shift, how this influences um, the whole Europe, because again, what we see from the monitoring, uh, Europeans uh, un like understand that the war in Ukraine, but they don't understand how it influenced the, the environment of Europe. So here are some facts. I mentioned about Black Sea, which is also watched Bulgaria, Romania, Turkey, and Georgia, and again, deaths of dolphins, mines, uh, which somebody find in the water near Romania, Bulgaria, it's uh, influence again, the whole Black Sea region. Um, the experts say that actually, uh, because of this political um, uh, outcome of Russia from all the international organization, it's also threatens um, a lot of units which were uh, organized around ecological problems. For example, Arctic region, where Russia has a lot of um, entrance, physical physical entrance to Arctic region, and now they are like kings there, and nobody can control what they're doing there. And since Arctic is the um, biggest, uh, like climate change influence Arctic the most because this ice is melting, uh, now nobody can control what Russia is doing there. Uh, I mentioned also about this huge number of tones um, uh, went to the air, and again, you can't smell it and feel it, but it is there, and it influenced the, the atmosphere. And again, uh, the whole uh, problem with this, you know, global politics around energy supply, you see that Europe tried to quickly switch from uh, Russian gas to other other uh, resources, green energy boosting, but still some culture, some countries, especially in Asia, they started to come back to coal mining, which was already the old school, but because of the crisis, they started to to uh, reopen the mines again. Th this is the problem also. So as you see, it's uh, like qu quite a big uh, influence. And uh, I'm finishing with just uh, uh, showing you the disbalance between how huge the problem is, not only for Ukraine, but for the whole Europe and, and uh, the world. But from the other side, we don't see much um, interest of media to that. This is the um, extract of the media monitoring, which we did in June in major European and um, UK, USA and Asia countries. And uh, apart from all the media highlights about the war, only 1% was devoted to the environment. So media write about the war, but environmental piece is only 1%. And of course, you see that uh, the, the war is no more in, in top highlights. It's only if uh, heavy bombing and, for example, as five hours ago, the village uh, from my native city, Kharkiv, was heavily bombed and 51 people died. Uh, uh, of course, all media will write about it tomorrow morning, but then half a year silence. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the most of interest, both actually Ukrainian citizens and international media goes to nuclear and chemical because people can understand it. Chernobyl case and then chemicals, which which uh, 
Second, uh, First World War case. Uh, the most highlights come, came from USA and Poland. Uh, the most media which highlighted were in English. And uh, the social media which highlighted the environmental problems the most were Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, not Instagram, for example, which is very popular in Spain, as I understood. So uh, I'm finishing, and this is just my, my um, advice to you is among all the problems I mentioned to focus. Mm, it will be difficult to, to show the whole picture, to choose one topic, is a chemical or animals or natural parks or something uh, single. And uh, I can give you additional information if you need about particular figures, I don't know, data, scale, so you can write me directly. I will send uh, any necessary information for you. But but what is important is to understand is that it's interesting for the audience you are targeting or not. Because if, if audience is not interested in saving dolphins, change the audience or change the topic yeah or generate that interest so i understand that your your mentors your right your mentors will work on this with you further but this is my advice for you as a communication person uh, how we usually work with communication tasks um uh, that that's it if you have any questions reflection comments please please 